All right, so if you guys want a budget monitor for your filmmaking needs and you wanna make some dope videos without looking at that little tiny screen on your Sony cameras, this right here is the Lyman 5 by OC. This right here is a great budget monitor that you can get for $189 and it also has a thousand nits of brightness. So you can actually use this in daylight. This thing right here got you covered with a thousand nits of brightness. All right, so this right here has the Swift OF touchscreen technology. So this monitor is actually touchscreen, if you guys didn't know that already. And basically you could interact with this screen as if you're looking at your Sony cameras or your Canon cameras. You can adjust the exposure, the brightness, you can expose correctly and get that focus that you really want, especially if you're using manual focus lenses. Me, I typically shoot with autofocus lenses, so I don't really have much of a problem, but I wanted to purchase this so I can get a better viewing angle or better view. So when I do record videos for clients, I can actually hit focus every single time. I know with the Sony a7 IV that I use, I do miss focus some of the times because the screen is so tiny. And this Lyman 5 or Lilman 5 actually is 5.5 inches. So we're gonna go and unbox this right now. We're gonna show you what this is about. All right, so this is the Lyman 5 um, 5.5 4K monitor. All right, so in the bag, let's see, they have this right here. We're gonna actually read off the cards because they actually give you a nice instruction manual. Why would I have an instruction manual like this without even reading it? That has an HDMI in and HDMI out. So you can actually hook up multiple monitors to this monitor if you guys really wanted to. So if you're doing client work or anything like that, they can have a separate monitor on the side with the longer HDMI cable and they can actually view what you're viewing at the same time. Also, right here, you guys can't really see, but right here it says it has different LUT inputs. This says Rec 709, so you can actually put a Rec 709 LUT conversion on this monitor. And I think it allows you to put five or eight LUTs. So this actually allows you to do different type of color profiles. If you use Rec 709 to convert your images, you can actually put your own LUTs inside of the monitor itself. So you can actually record straight off the monitor and see the colors that you actually are gonna be color grading with. This card is actually the size of the monitor, which is dope. This here, you guys can see, it has the Rec 709, it has, the, has all the other presets that you can put. Battery life, you know, you can turn on and off the camera tools, the tool settings, the monitor settings. You can add or delete tools and set settings with the toolbar. They give you a Chinese one and they give you an actual English one, which is dope. Comes with a cleaning cloth right here, if you guys see that. And here's the monitor, boom. The monitor's right here, but we have one more thing. I think they give you some new O-rings, if you guys can see that, some new O-rings. Okay, so it gives you the O-rings, so you can actually put it either on this side or on this side where you mount the camera. This monitor mount actually comes default on the Lilman 5 on the side of the device. I actually am gonna be taking this off, which I already did take it off, just so I could actually have a better view to basically show you guys how this is. So let's peel off this tape, hold up. Nice. This is the OC Lyman 5. I already went over a lot of the things and the features that it has, but there's so many features that 
are in this small device right here that's gonna actually help with video recording and filmmaking. So the Lemon 5 has a thousand nits of brightness so you can view it in the daylight. It offers 10-bit color contrast ratio and D65 color temperature and eliminates the need of a cooling fan. So there's a lot of these monitors that actually have cooling fans on either the bottom or the top or the side but these actually have ventilation holes all at the top and it has some on the bottom as well. So it eliminates the need of a fan to push the heat out. It actually has enough ventilation that this won't overheat. And using a monitor, you actually won't overheat your camera because of the fact that it's eliminating the need to use your monitor at the same time of recording. You just view everything on here. So this has pristine and crisp image quality. The Lemon 5 has some powerful color management as OC's high quality field monitor with 22 bits of internal processing. This color engine delivers precise color and tone rendering, enhancing fine shadow and skin tone details. OC's HDR log mapping technology accurately maps the HDR and log signals from nearly any camera models to display on the panel. If you guys just heard me right there, you can actually input your LUTs and you can actually record log and it's gonna show up like it shows up on your camera. If you put your LUTs on the conversion LUTs for Direct 709, it's actually gonna display like it will on your camera and it's amazing because you can actually see it bigger and closer with that 5.5 inch display or the five inch display, it's, it's amazing. The Lyman 5 has a super convenient touch swift OS. It offers multiple customizable my sets that streamline crucial footage checking tasks, such as framing, exposure, and focus checking. Switching between different my assets is a simple as a single swipe, eliminating the need to dig in different menus while shooting. All right, so despite the lightweight design, this has a polycarbonate for the outside of the case. It is plastic, but it's actually a little bit sturdier. Um, I actually really like it. It's really sturdy. I'm trying to bend it and all that, but it doesn't, it doesn't budge and it doesn't creak or anything like that, which is actually really cool. A lot of the monitors I've seen reviews of, they're kind of, I wouldn't say flimsy, but they're a little bit more cheaper. This right here, I think is actually pretty decent for $189. I would honestly recommend this to a lot of people that are just getting into YouTube filming or filmmaking or anything in that nature because this is a pretty cheap monitor with a lot of features. So when I did my research, I did see that it has two different mounting options, which is actually very good because on the side, if you really want, you can actually mount this vertically like this. So if you shoot vertical video, it can show the video vertically here. Even if you shoot it horizontal, you can actually get the vertical bars inside of here. Almost like how the FX6 has built in. The features that it has, it has a headphone jack here so you can actually listen to the recording that's coming out of the camera, which is really cool. It's gonna go transmit through the HDMI. This has the RS-232 connector there. So this has a battery out. So if you have a regular cable that goes into here, this is what you're gonna use for the battery out. So we're gonna go to the back of it. This has an HDMI in and an HDMI out. If you guys can't see, HDMI in, HDMI out, and also has a battery mount right here for the Sony LPF batteries. Um, I don't know if I was pronouncing that correctly, but um, this right here is actually a great feature because you can actually put the battery straight down the middle and it's not off to the side like all the other monitors. Not all of them do that, but some that use the external battery do have the mount on the side, so it's gonna kind of be lopsided and weigh the camera to the side a little bit. So this is a great design that they put this in the middle. So now we're gonna go next to here, which is the D-Tap basically. So you can actually use a V-mount battery and connect right here to it. This is a six volt or six volt to 16 volt input right here for the battery which is dope and it has a locking mechanism a thread locking mechanism here so you can't ever pull that battery line out accidentally or anything like that also on the bottom of it we have the 
SD card, they recommend using a 16 gigabyte SD card just so you can actually put your LUTs in and update the firmware and all that. I don't think they suggest using anything higher than the 16 gigabyte SD card, but we'll try with the 128 gigabyte SD card I have because I don't have anything lower than that. Um, so we're gonna see if I can input LUTs or anything like that. And we are going to put the batteries on now. We got the Sony F. 750 batteries and we're actually gonna unbox this right now um, so basically comes with the charger and it comes with the I think micro USB cable right here um, pretty basic this is like kind of older technology but um, it still works they repurpose it which is really cool and this is the F750 battery right here if you guys can't tell um, this F750 battery is actually kind of beefy, but it's not too bad. It doesn't weigh down anything too, too much. So it comes with two of those. Here's the second one right here. If you guys can see it, I'm going to put this off to the side here. And we're going to basically put that battery on. And it kind of just clips in, kind of just line up the holes, boom. Clip it in. So now what we are going to do is we actually have that small rig adapter that I was talking to you guys about. So instead of using this big kind of bulky mount, which is cool if you don't have a cage or nothing like that yet. But since I have a cage with a top handle on my Sony a7 IV, I actually opted to get this. It was only $30. I unboxed it a little bit earlier, but um, this right here is my small rig monitor mount. We're gonna take this and we're gonna bring this all the way to the bottom and we're going to mount it. All right, so we have it mounted right here. I just went and got a Allen key so I can actually put it in here and tighten it down a little bit more. It's kind of crooked. Yeah, it's good now. So now we are set up and ready to go. So I'm actually gonna turn this on for you guys so I can actually show you what it is that they have on the menu. Now we're gonna actually switch over to the other camera right here, the, the iPhone, and boom. This actually looks almost like the cards themselves, which is cool. So they actually took almost like a screenshot of it Obviously you're not gonna see the picture because of the fact that this is not plugged into the camera. And I know I'm all over the place, but I also bought this right here from Condor Blue. And this is a HDMI cable, HDMI, HDMI to HDMI. So this is gonna be hooking up to the HDMI in, and then it's gonna go boom, straight into the camera and we'll be good. Right now, if you guys can see, we have the Rec 709. We actually can, I gotta actually learn this. So it has no signal for the HDMI. I put it to Rec 709 and it has all of that. So we are going to go up. All right, so the different inputs that it has are, it has the backlight, which you can actually adjust on the screen right here, on the left side of the screen at all times. Or you can do the headphone volume on the right side of the screen which is actually really cool. And then you have, you can rotate the screen. So if you wanna rotate the screen to have it vertical or not, you can do that. You have the status bars, you have the LUTs, before user LUTs, after user LUTs, so you can actually see and toggle between it. All right, so it has the aspect ratios and it has the safe. We're actually gonna be adding these. I wouldn't say the touchscreen is the best, but it is doable. All right, so in this, we have the aspect ratio, we have the safe mode, so you can actually see the safe area of what you're recording. You have a you have a crosshair right here, so you can see the center of the screen, crosshatch, so it gives you the grids. You can do the rule of thirds, you know about that stuff. And it has the anamorphic mode as well which is really cool. So if you actually add on anamorphic lenses to your camera, 
you can actually de-squeeze it inside of this monitor here. I know with the Sony a7 IV, it does not have no de-squeezing on it at all. So having this monitor, if you get a anamorphic lens, you definitely can de-squeeze it. It has a bunch of different options for that. Now we're gonna go over to the color. So we have the different styles right here. So you can do Sony, you can do Canon, you can do Blackmagic, you can do Fuji, you can do Nikon and Panasonic and RED. For the gamma display, you have S-Log, S-Log2 and S-Log3. You can actually put your Log Rex 09 conversion kit. Okay, so that's gonna conclude the video. This was just an unboxing and a little bit of a uh, guide on the OC Lyman 5 and also the batteries and all the other accessories that I got. Just wanted to show you guys that right there. I'm actually going to a video shoot literally right after this video and we're gonna test out this Lyman 5 monitor so if you guys did enjoy this video please hit that like subscribe button and share this to anyone that wants to get a budget monitor this monitor has a lot of great features and i can't wait to try this monitor all right so i'm gonna see you guys in the next video keep going keep recording and i'm gonna see you guys later peace out it's a thumbnail